All right, so in today's video, we're going to... <coughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so in today's video, we're going to take a look at my favorite Mercedes radio. And we're talking about the Bosch BO1150 or the APS BT2. APS standing for autopilot system, which it is not. But anyway, uh, this unit in particular doesn't have a code. Some have the code disabled, others still have it. And keep in mind, if you don't connect it to a car that can speak to it, it will ask for the code every time. So that's something to keep an eye out for. Now, uh, we're gonna probably start with a demo because I forgot to do it last time. So let's do it. All right, so this being a no code unit, we should be able to just start it right up. Boom. Oh, why is it upset? I think I didn't connect the tape mechanism. Jesus. Oh, I did. <clears throat> That's annoying. I wonder why it does that. Anyway, I'll show you guys the mod and um, we'll get back to why that uh, is malfunctioning. So, uh, the Bluetooth module is online and connected, but I do want to connect another phone. So, it's connected to this one. And uh, up is next, bottom is previous, and scan is play pause plus answer in case the microphone is connected. And uh, long press should enter pairing. And it has. And we can see it over here. All right. So let's go to AM, which should be dead silent. And uh, let's play some music. And a recommendation would be to turn the volume up to full. This way the sound stage gets the required volume that it's expecting and all the capacitors work as expected and the bass comes through as expected, right? So, um, yeah, let's test play pause, although that should really work. Next, previous. Previous again. And uh, what else? We can test the fact that it does reconnect automatically. So I've turned off the ignition. And assuming that you get back into the car, you should disconnect soon. Right? And then you get back into the car. And it should reconnect automatically. And you can just hit play. And again, this beep will not happen. It's happening on this particular unit. I'll, uh, I'll get that sorted out. Mm, yeah, volume works. All the sound settings work, everything. All right, so let's get to actually how this works. We could probably turn the music all the way down and uh, have that play in the background because Joe is a good friend which actually has a party going on tonight, so. And this song should not be recognized by YouTube, which is why I'm constantly playing it, and I do like it. So, yeah. There are actually two ways to go about this mod. Let's, um... Let's what? Now let's let this be together because I have good images. So there's two ways to do this. Actually, the first way I found to do it is there's an FM blank or FM mute signal that you can actually control from the Bluetooth chip, right? So you can be an FM and hit play and it'll override FM. However, this was not, like you could definitely try it, but this wasn't too friendly because whenever you'd get a call 
or whenever you'd open, for example, Instagram or Facebook, it would send a silent stream over to the radio just to be ready to play any stories you might have going or whatever. And it would blank FM more often than I would have uh, enjoyed, right? And so I ended up going the AM route as in the as in all the other radios. And that basically allows you to have a separate separate uh, input and you go to AM and then everything works. And uh, I found that to be more predictable and more user friendly, right? So let's quickly go over to the uh, go over the AM. Uh, so let's quickly go over the FM side of things. And so for FM, I used the um, LED one output, right? Because that has a, a bit more driving force. And you wanna take this over to this pin on the bottom, right? So this is in the, when you turn the radio, it's over here, right? So this is the bottom of the radio, the rear, and this is the right side when it's flipped. Anyway, you'll find it, right? There's an FM uh, front end, I think it is, right? The TDA 7, whatever, 738D or something. And if you cut this trace and you connect to it, you can basically commandeer the muting function of the FM chip. Mm, and for this to work with a uh, jack, you would basically need a 20 ohm resistor from that extra ground pin in the jack, right? So whenever you insert a jack into your female 3.5 millimeter connector, this would basically tie the ground and it would um, basically mute down the, the FM chip, right? So here are a few of my notes. I've uh, read them, they're fine. Mm, this is how the um, FM chip looks, right? And uh, this is how you connect left and right. And this applies to both AM and FM mods. So the negative of these two capacitors and the sound stage in this chip, in this uh, TDA7342, actually floats at around six volts, 6.5. So you definitely need two decoupling capacitors, DC block, DC blocking capacitors, right? So don't forget those. And for ground, I just used these two unused, these two pads from an unused connector, but any ground should do, right? And here you can see I'm taking off my FM mute but uh, for the AM route, which I do recommend, you need to do the following. So in this can over here, you need to lift up this uh, stabilizing pin, right? This just bends pretty easily. And you will find, uh, what is this? Uh, you will find this um, AM front end, is it? Or something, I don't know. But anyway, if you lift up the first two pads on the right side, you will disconnect AM basically. Uh, this is the chip in question. And basically we're disconnecting the standby switch. And uh, that basically allows us to have no sound on AM and allows us to actually inject our Bluetooth audio much the same way right and left through DC blocking capacitors, as I've shown. Um, for DC blocking capacitors, I use these SMD jobbies. And unfortunately, these are just 6.3 volts, 100 mic. Do try 10 volts, however many mics you can get and biggest footprint you can get as well. These are quite expensive, but uh, you don't use a lot of them, so should be fine. What else? Um, for the supply, the supply is on this side. Right? Flip it and then it's on the right side, but over here below, you have a plus five volts and a ground, 
which is present whenever the radio is on, right? So even if you're in FM or whatever tape navigation, this will be powered. So this is not one of those mods that comes on when you hit AM, but it's that's fine. And what else can I say? Oh yeah, the button control. So the button control is was very annoying on this particular unit because it does actually have a different board. But what I mostly found is this board. And uh, it's a pain in the ass to route the wires to the Bluetooth chip. So what I do is I take them out next to this connector. So there's a bit of room there. However, I wouldn't recommend connecting this wire gauge directly onto the traces because you run the risk of actually tearing them off. Uh, these are very skinny, bo uh, skinny traces. And so what I do is actually take magnet wire, which I use for jumpers. I take it um, right around here, let's say. And then I connect the wires, the magnet wire to thicker PVC insulated wires. And I wrap everything in either sanitary silicone or this uh, Celastic just to ensure proper rigidity. And yeah, that's basically it. This would be a link one, right? Bottom of this resistor all the way over here. And there is one more link that has to go from this point to this point, right? Just to reconnect those two pads and all the way down here and then down here. And that will be link two. As for cuts, just four cuts, well, five. So two cuts, one over here and one over here to disconnect these two button pads. These two cuts to free up these two pads. This cut over here for the play pause button and this cut over here to free up the what will become the common common connection to all the all the button pads. And as for the um, controls, right? This would be play, this would be previous common which would connect to this uh, blue link all the way at the top and next would be this one, right? So I'll uh, zoom out so you guys can have a nice place to pause. All right. And let's go over to the different board and this is rather similar but not identical, unfortunately. So same deal, connect the magnet wires to proper wires over here and add Celastic. Do not block any of these holes. They have either metal studs connecting to screws or actual screws going through them. So be careful, right? There's a lot of room over here where the encoder goes through. So I would advise using this to route the cables from one side to the other. And over here, I've apparently not uh, counted up all the cuts, but anyway, one cut at the top to disconnect the two upper bottoms uh, buttons. You can see that I've uh, cut something and uh, went back. This cut at the bottom. Then um, one cut over here to disconnect this button. One cut over here one cut over here and one cut over here. So that would kind of be it. And then we need one small link from this side to this side. And one cut to common out all the buttons. So it goes from here to here to here. And these are vias, you can uh, scratch them and connect quite well to them and over here at the top. And as for the buttons, again, same deal. Common, play pause, previous, and next. 
So the four wires that go to the Bluetooth module. And that being said, I think this covers everything. What else do I have? Not much. Yeah. So perhaps a bit of a rant. I hate this model. So it appears that Bosch rushed it and threw as much money as they could at the project. So there is a lot of redundancy in here. They have, I think, four ICs that could do volume and bass and treble and faders, including this one for the tape mechanism. So a lot of money was thrown away. And something to keep an eye out for is these amplifiers do not have any sort of uh, short circuit or short to ground protection. So the instant one of the wires touches the chassis, one of these will blow up. Most def, 100%. No way around it. So be very careful. Uh, as for sound, yeah, it sounds right. It sounds okay. And it looks pretty. And the one thing that keeps happening and why this one does not have a usable tape, me tape mechanism is that the mechanism for the screen relies on this piece of shit cog that gets chewed up and then you no longer have a screen. So in this case, I glued it and uh, I deactivated the, um, the motor and I think something it doesn't like over there, right? I don't know exactly what, but uh, yeah. So that's why it does the beep. And if you don't connect the tape mechanism, it'll take down the screen and beep profusely. It really wants to have a tape mechanism inside, otherwise it is not usable. Uh, what else? I think that's it. If you want to mod one of these at my place, with pleasure, write me an email. I'll probably have my email in comments down below. Um, and if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments as well. Have a good one.